Ladies and gentlemen, everything between, hello, welcome to the channel. So this video is kind of piggybacking off of the German history reaction we did. I wanted to learn the history of Germany. And of course that led me into World War II. And I said, okay, well, how did the world wars even begin? And y'all were saying, aha, favor. You've got to take it even a step further back in history and check out World War I. So with Germany though, I, from my understanding, it was a lot of empty promises that Hitler made to the people who were already suffering. And so that's really what mobilized his ability to manipulate the population of Germany. And so I'm thinking, okay, how did things become so bad that, you know, they were looking for a leader like Hitler? So this is leading us into World War One to see what the heck happened, what led to that war, and how a domino effect of just like terrible things in humanity occurred thus after. So subscribe to me here. Let me know if you want me to do more history reactions like this or specifically what content you want on the channel, but make sure you subscribe so we can help the channel grow and you don't miss the content. And follow me on Instagram because I'm trying to get to 10K over there and I would appreciate all the help. So let's see, how did World War I start? Yeah. It was called the war to end all wars. Unfortunately, it was that bad. World War I didn't deliver on that promise. It mm. was, however, the first time in the history of planet Earth that nations from around Red the flowers. world fought in a single war. It started with an assassination and a series of questionable decisions. We can point fingers and play the blame game, but really there is no single person or country that holds all of the responsibility. Could the war that killed millions have been prevented? Most definitely. Also, let me know, does this make me a bad person? And before you just rush Lee and say yes, because you also paint her sometimes. I could never serve in the military. I commemorate those who can, but I could never do it. Let me know if you feel the same way. I couldn't, mm -mm. I'm not going to war for nobody, war with nobody. I would rather stay home with my family and watch CNN as it all plays off. Let's take a look at what caused the Great War, explore how it could have been prevented, and learn how to not repeat the mistakes of the past. World War I lasted from 1914 to 1918 and included mm. countries in Europe, Russia, the United States, what? and countries in the Middle East. The two main sides of the what war the were the Central Powers, which consisted of Germany, Austria-Hungary, Italy, the Ottoman Empire, and Bulgaria, who huh. fought against the Allied Powers of France, Britain, Russia, Portugal, and, and Japan. Oh. Later in the war, the United States would also join the side of the Allies. <laughs> no, but because I, I literally said in America, but for whatever reason, we didn't join until, like you said, later. Where were, what were we doing? Where were we at? We're just chilling on the whole other side of the world. To be fair though, we were on the whole other side of the world. So why did we get involved? Pearl. No, because it's all coming back like I have amnesia. Did Pearl ha No, that started World War II. Okay, so why did we join in World War I? Hmm. This is making me want, after I'm done filming, I'm gonna go watch some like war movies. Cause I, I want, or, or do you want me to save it for reactions for you guys? Let me know. I want to go watch them though. Later in the war, the United States would Island also powers. join the side of the allies. But what happened? Why did all of these nations get involved in one of the most disastrous no wars land. in history? Let's explore the mechanisms and missteps that led to the first world war. Yes. Although there were many players in world war one, the conflict started with Serbia and Austria-Hungary. The Serbian mm. government was eager to claim more territory for the nation. Serbia was already in a state of aggression due to the Balkan Wars that just ended a year before the start of World War I. After the Balkan War, Serbian nationalists wanted to liberate the South Slavs of Austria-Hungary, thus unifying the Slavic peoples on- So were the Slavs though in Austria-Hungary wanting to be liberated? Like what if they were just chilling in the, what, the country next over having a grand old time and here comes the Slavs. No, you need to come right back. It's kind of like the Irish and the people in the Republic of Ireland. Like look, people are where they want to be, like let's chill. Or were they really being mistreated by the Austrians? Someone let me know about the Slavs. Cause again, like you just said, this is what catapulted a whole world war, so. Under one nation. The extreme nationalism led to the assassination of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand who was oh, heir to the Austro-Hungarian Empire. At 11.15 a.m. on June 28, 1914, Franz Ferdinand and his wife Sophie, Duchess of Hohenberg, no, both of were them? shot to death and- Oh! They got both of them? As a woman, it just, it does, hurt. I'm not gonna lie, it hurts more when a woman dies of violence. Dang. So, I understand they take out the Ferdinand guy, but why do you have to kill the wife? 
like it's would she get power if she was still alive? I don't think it probably works that way. They'd probably make like his brother or someone take the throne. Dang. And why are you in a cave? It's the same thing as JF Kennedy riding around in that convertible in Dallas. Like y'all gotta, you can't just be parading around. You need some bulletproof glass. Welcome to modern times. Sarajevo, Bosnia by Gavrilo Princip. Princip was a Serbian extremist who had connections to a secret society called the Black Hand. The assassination was the match that ignited the First World War. However, there were many other factors that led to the powder keg that would explode. Should the assassination of Franz Ferdinand have led to an all-out war? Probably not. There's more to the story here. Uh -huh. In the shadow, isn't that the, the? I think there were the Russian family that was sh all killed. It was lurked Kaiser Wilhelm II, who may as well be much to blame as Gavrilo uh -huh. Princip in starting World War One. Wilhelm II was the leader of Germany, and he was diabolical. Kaiser mm. Wilhelm II wanted a strong Germany that dominated Europe both economically and militarily in strength. He did not want Russia or Great Britain to have more influence and power than he did. Therefore, Wilhelm II allied himself and Germany with Austria-Hungary. He knew that if Austria-Hungary went to war with Serbia, then Russia would come to Serbia's aid. This mm -hmm. would drag Russia's ally France into the conflict. We'll examine later why Wilhelm wanted this war to happen so badly. And it's crazy to think like back at this time, Russia wasn't like this huge supervillain as they are today. Like they had allies and I'm talking about China, like France, the United States. Kaiser Wilhelm II secretly funded Austria-Hungary in their endeavor to suppress Serbia. He allowed Germany to give Austria-Hungary a carte blanche or a blank check. Basically, mm. Germany would fund the war effort using their wealthy economy to ensure Austria-Hungary came out on top. With the assassination of their heir and the backing of Germany, Austria-Hungary felt empowered to start their war with Serbia. They sent Serbia an ultimatum with Wait, such- what? With the assassination of our leader, let's go to war. I would say you're kind of not very secure anymore. Let's not go to war. But hey, they did the opposite. Of Germany, Austria, Hungary felt empowered to start their war with Serbia. They sent Serbia an ultimatum with such harsh terms that it was impossible to accept. Hmm. There was only one alternative, war. But there was more to the story. The decisions of Austria, Hungary and Germany were clearly geared toward war. It's undeniable that World War I started because of these aggressive decisions, but could the whole conflict have been avoided if other countries had made better decisions? Were there strings being pulled behind the scenes by the countries on both sides of the war? No, because it seems like Germany and Austria-Hungary were the aggressor here. They, like, like he just said, were feeding into the war. They wanted war. There's no one else to blame. Were there strings being pulled behind the scenes by the countries on both sides of the war? Let's find out. First, let's take a look at the Triple Entente nations, which can- Let's see, we got, I'm gonna say that's England with Big Ben. That's France, obviously. And then this is Russia. Consisted of a secret pact between Great Britain, France, and Russia. My Could mind. any of these nations have secretly wanted a world war to heighten their power? Could there have been a secret plot by the allies to set up a war they would eventually win? Russia mm. is, and always has been, a large, powerful nation. What could Russia gain from a war against the Triple Alliance of Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Italy? At first glance, Russia's role in World War I seems to be based around supporting their ally of Serbia. But as we look closer, it seems that Russia's alliance only played a superficial role in their decisions to go to war. In fact, Russia barely even tried to find a diplomatic solution to prevent the conflict. Instead, they immediately start. So again, Russia's kind of like, uh, I don't like let the people fight it out. We're gonna plot and scheme over here and see how it all ends kind of thing and they're like like he's saying gearing up for just to make themselves stronger to deploy troops and ramp up military production once austria hungary showed aggression towards serbia it mm. would seem russia had no intentions on working out the conflict diplomatically history shows it was russia not germany that mobilized its military first oh, damn see i was sitting here about to blame germany and austria hungary but of course it was the russians so they've really always been aggressive since like the 1940s. Oh, dang. History shows it was Russia, not Germany, that mobilized its military first. Russia may have wanted the war to claim more territory and power for the nation, but there was another player on the Triple mm -hmm. Entente side who may have played a behind the scenes yeah, role in starting World War I. France did not make any outwardly aggressive moves in the mm -hmm. months that led to the outbreak of war but they were making secret strategic moves. 
France may be the only reason eaters? that Russia prepared for war in the first place. During talks of what was to be done about the Central Powers, France offered Russia its own blank check. The stipulation was that Russia would help Europeanize the Austrian-Hungary Empire. France had an idea of what this part of the world should look like. Ew. So they're like colonizers but French, imperialists but French. Why can't the Austrian-Hungary people have their own culture and... No, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Like playing underhanded just to like assimilate them. That's the same thing we did to the Native Americans here. It's, I don't like that. Mm -mm. Ionized the Austrian-Hungary Empire. France had an idea of what this part of the world should look like and rather than entering directly racism. into a conflict, they funded the Russian military to start a war that they could benefit from. France encouraged Russia's aggression toward Austria-Hungary and Germany. French leaders seemed to not like the idea of having a powerful nation of Germany right next door. If Germany was focusing on fighting Russia on the Eastern Front, it would provide France with the opportunity to either protect itself or launch an uncontested invasion into Germany wow. from the Western Front. It would seem that things did not play out exactly as France predicted because of Germany's deployment of troops to fight on both the Russian and French fronts simultaneously. Okay, so the... Wait, so who's to blame here? One side is Germany, Austria, Hungary, and the other side is the di diabolical minds of freaking Russia and France. So obviously, like, your initial judgment is to blame Germany and Austria, Hungary, but really, it's both sides. These, both these people are bad, in this case, anyway. That's crazy. They both have something to gain that they're willing to go to war for. It's just Russia and France aren't saying it outwardly. Mm. Now, if the shady actions of France leading oh, up to the start the of World doing War now? surprised you, then what Great Britain did may shock you even more. Oh, God. Britain was a dominant force in colonization yeah. and had control of the seas with their powerful navy. Would they benefit from an all-out war in Europe? Germany was becoming powerful, both economically and militarily. Britain knew that this was a big threat to their empire. In the eyes of Great Britain's leaders, the Why is everyone a threat, threat, threat? We're bordering Canada. They're their own country. We don't got a problem with them. Same can't be said about Mexico, but that's a different conversation. Why can't everybody just be great? Why can't everybody just thrive? I just have to, someone have to be better than someone else. Knew that this was a big threat to their empire. In the eyes of Great Britain's leaders, the world wasn't big enough for both a German empire and a British empire. If Germany continued Egos. on the path it was headed, Britain's global dominance of the seas and financial system would be threatened and perhaps lost. Well, it's already been lost in modern day. Like, I don't get it. Like, everybody just has, let's everyone have their one thing that they're good at. British people, you can have the seas. The German, you can have your land. Russia, you can have your military equipment. Like, why do we have to go to a world war for all this? This global dominance of the seas and financial system would be threatened and perhaps lost. This was unacceptable to the leaders of Great Britain. These notions of loss of dominance may have driven Great Britain to stay out of diplomatic talks and instead encourage Russian aggression. It would seem that at the time, Great Britain so Russia had an inferiority played. complex when it came to Germany. They had failed to mediate during the Balkan Wars, and they refused to mediate the during the lead up to World War I. So it looks like a big, also another part that we got to check out is the Balkan Wars, because they keep mentioning it. And I'm thinking that's again with Serbia and Austria-Hungary. Um, but again, all these key players are, I see key players like this is Game of Thrones. These key countries and, um, Government bodies are also involved in the Balkan War that has now trickled down into the World War One, which will then progress into World War Two, and what we know as the Holocaust. So, yeah, the Balkan War is another war we've got to check out. To mediate during the Balkan Wars, and they refused to mediate during the lead up to World War One. The thought process may have been that the more conflicts Germany was a part of, the more likely they were to be weakened. Great Britain had clearly <laughs> won the naval arm race by 1910. It just okay. seemed that it wasn't enough. They were still living in fear of Germany's threats, and it would appear rightfully so as history showed over the next several decades. It needs to be said that if Great Britain wanted to prevent war, they should have contributed to the mediation discussion. The, the diplomatic approach. The fact approach. that they actively avoided the mediation shows Britain might have had other motives. Just like, um, who are the, just like France. And just like, literally just like France, like everyone's just turning a blind eye, oh, let them fight, hoping that someone will kill off their opponent. Like, literally, they're in the same position as France, in my opinion. Let me know what you think, though.
discussions. The fact that they actively avoided the mediation shows Britain might have had other motives, especially if war meant a weakened Germany. History is written by the victors. Therefore, mm -hmm. history textbooks tend to attribute most of, if not all of, the blame for World War I On Germany. to Austria, Hungary, and Germany. And that's literally what I was doing in the beginning. Like, the way it's presented, it's Germany, blame Germany, blame Germany. But you don't even think about France, Russia, Britain, and the U the U.S. Where were we when all this is happening? Like, I, I know that we were aware that all this shit was going down. So what were we doing? Probably doing the same thing like, oh, that's their side of the world. It's not our problem. Or let's see who kills who off. And then we'll try to capitalize off of that. It's everybody's very like out for themselves and like willing to step on whoever they have to to get what they want. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Nobody plays. It's humanity. Why can't we all just be nice and get along? Most of, if not all of, the blame for World War I to Austria, Hungary, and Germany. You have to wonder who would be blamed if the outcome of the war was reversed. We discussed mm. how the nations of the Triple Entente were by no means free of blame for the start of the conflict, but let's mm. take a closer look at the motives and actions of the Triple, Triple Alliance, Alliance, which too. was the secret pact between Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Italy. Let's find out if they really are to blame, like so many textbooks say. Other than retaliation, what was Austria-Hungary after? In a word, territory. Yeah. Austria-Hungary wanted to add more land and people to its already large empire. Can't do that. If there's already all these lands are already established, you can't just invade people and take their land and force them to assimilate. Like that's the same thing the Serbians were trying to do to the Serbians in Austria-Hungary. That's the same thing France was trying to do to the Germans. Y'all are so ridiculous. More land equals more resources and more men for their military. Austria-Hungary had its sights set on Serbia for a while. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand mm. allowed them to perfect the opportunity to make their dreams of taking over Serbian lands a reality. Oh, so earlier I was confused. Frank Ferdinand is the Duke of Serbia. And that made the austrian hungries feel like they could go then invade Serbia. And the austrian hungries did it with the support of Germany behind them. And but Germany didn't outwardly say this. They had Russia fight with Austria-Hungary, right? It's making more sense. So at the core of this, it was Austria, yeah, Austria-Hungary with the support of Germany causing World War I. And all these other countries just tried to manipulate the situation and get benefits from it, basically, right? So no one's not at fault, but the ones who started the war really were the Austria-Hungary people. Austria-Hungary's desires were made clear when they offered an obscene ultimatum to Serbia. The ultimatum itself was delivered on July 23, 1914. It required Serbia to accept an Austro-Hungarian inquiry into the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand. The inquiry would be conducted solely by Austria-Hungarian investigators. Wait, I'm so sorry. Did I have it backwards? Frank Ferdinand. Ferdinand, Duke of who? Of Austria, okay. So then the Serbians killed the Austrian duke? And so they th thought for retaliation they should invert, invade Serbia. So they suspected that the Serbians were the ones who killed their duke. So therefore Serbia started it. And the Serbians killed him because they wanted like their Serbian people in Austria-Hungary back and they wanted more land. So the ones, so the one at fault is actually Serbia, my bad. Serbia also needed to suppress all anti-Austrian propaganda and eliminate any terrorist or extremist organizations within its borders. The leaders of Austria-Hungary demanded that an answer to the ultimatum be sent within 48 hours. While I support the sentiment of not being anti-anyone, you can't demand anything from another country. So. However, the ambassador to Serbia delivered the ultimatum and immediately left the country to return back to Austria-Hungary. He already knew what was going to happen next. Aww. There was no way that Serbia would accept the ultimatum. This meant war. The ultimatum served one purpose. Austria-Hungary knew Serbia would never accept their terms, but they also knew if they attacked without warning, it would make Serbia look like the victim. Mm -hmm. By sending the ultimatum, it pushed the burden of avoiding war onto the Serbian government. This I would just not answer. And that is my answer. No answer. And then what do you do? We're at a stalemate. So Austria would still have to invade my country and I would then be the victim and allowed to fight back. I'm not answering your dumb ultimatum. You can't ultimatum me in my country. You have, you can't tell me what to do. By sending the ultimatum, it pushed the burden of a- 
Yeah, because Austria-Hungary is the one whose leader is dead now, not Serbia. You can't tell me nothing, Austria. What do you mean? Avoiding war onto the Serbian government. This way, Austria-Hungary created the illusion of giving Serbia a chance to stop the war. When they didn't, Serbia would look like the bad guy. But the ridiculous ultimatum did not stand up to the test of history, and mm. Austria-Hungary is still seen as the aggressor. Really, mm. what it came down to was that Austria-Hungary wanted to control more territory in the Balkan region. They needed a reason to go to war with Serbia to secure that land, and they found it in the assassination of their Archduke. Was the assassination a reason to conduct an all-out war? Probably not, but it Someone remind me again who the that weird um, society, whoever that this guy was a part of that killed the duke and his wife. He was a, what what country was he aligned with again? Was sufficient enough reason for the Austria-Hungary government at the time. However, none of this would have been possible without one key player. And I'm sure you can guess what's coming next. Germany. In the eyes mm -hmm. of many historians, Germany is to blame for the First World War. Why was Germany considered the most responsible in a conflict they did not directly they start? It. It's mostly because they alone they had the power it. to stop the war between Austria-Hungary and Serbia. Literally. All they needed to do was withdraw their blank check, and Austria-Hungary would not have the financial ability to support a war with Serbia. So, I personally, based on everything we've learned so far, I blame Austria-Hungary, Germany, and Russia. But then, on the other side, France, the UK, they all had their own motives too. No one is innocent here, but the people who are more at fault are most at fault, I mean, are Germany and Austria-Hungary. This would have kept Austria-Hungary in check, and they would have never issued their ultimatum. Germany also knew that if Austria-Hungary went to war with Serbia, Russia and France would both get pulled in. It was almost as if Germany needed to find a way to declare war on their competitors in the region without doing it themselves. Germany could never just outright declare the war on different. the other nations, or they would risk unifying the entire continent of Europe. I Sorry, I just re so, excuse me. Every the flag is different for Germany. This used to this is I thought it was red red, black, yellow or something like that or black, yellow, red or something. When did it change? Why did it change? Someone let me know. Against them. Or By we can react strategically to it. destabilizing the Balkans, they could goad Russia and therefore France into a war with their ally, thus allowing Germany to start a war to suit their needs. Hmm. The other reason that Germany wanted war was because it had peaked as a nation. If Germany allowed the rest of Europe to catch up, they would lose power and prestige. Huh. This upset no one more than Kaiser Wilhelm II who was an angry militaristic autocrat. He believed that he was predestined by God to lead his country to- Oh God, whenever they start bringing in God and their destiny and all that shit, they will stop at nothing. Um, someone assassinated Frank Ferdinand, why didn't they get this guy? Greatness. He hated diplomats and maintained that the only way to ensure Germany's spot of power was through war. He knew it was now or never if Germany was going to become the predominant world power. When a so everyone's always talking Hitler, Hitler, Hitler. No one talks about this Vang Valen, whatever his name is. He was the real freaking psycho. Our hungry autocrat is in charge of one of the world's psychos, most wealthy the and armed one. nations. There's only one outcome, war. In the end, World War I was caused by many different factors and countries. So There's not just one involved. person or nation to blame. However, some are more responsible than others. If the leaders of Europe were less hungry for power and more mm -hmm. willing to and sit land. down and negotiate, the war could have been avoided. Make no mistake, World War I was not unavoidable, but the leaders in charge saw war as a desirable outcome or were forced into it by their allies. And I know that over like 60% of my audience are men, but just one thing, what do all these people have in common? It's a testosterone, I'm telling you. Ugh. Willing to sit down and negotiate, the war could have been avoided. Make no mistake, World War I was not unavoidable, but the leaders in charge saw war as- And I wasn't talking about the, the fact they all have mustaches, or most of them anyway. I'm talking about the fact that they're all men. Let's go to war. Aye, aye, sir, I agree with you a desirable outcome, or were forced into it by their allies. A situation that would repeat itself again 21 years later. So if you're interested in more World War I information, check out- What is this? Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, the fact though this is just the tip of the iceberg and so much happens afterward. And a big question I still have is where was America? What were we doing? Baking pies in our like- General Electric's ovens in the 1940s. 
Hmm. Everybody just wanted power, people, to be better than the next person, to one-up someone, and it led to war, death, and destruction. For what? And the sad thing is, this is just World War I. We all know it leads into World War II, which is an even bigger atrocity. Oh, God. This was a lot. I really want to go watch some movies now, though, so I'll see you in the next one. Bye.